Is it just me? Or do the players need to take some blame as well? Now, I've made a couple of videos recently talking about Paul Warren and one yesterday where I was talking about the problems that Derby County have had. And in this one, we're going to be talking about why the players need to take some blame. Ultimately, the players aren't blameless. They are the 11 players on the pitch. Paul Warren can only do so much. Now, a lot of people will have been telling me over the course of the last few days that Paul Warren isn't at sole blame. And I do agree. Paul Warren isn't at sole blame. There's other people to blame, like the funding, the recruitment staff, the players in the building. Now, I'm going to talk about the players in this video because there's a few who I think haven't been performing to their level for a few weeks. And there's a few who I think need to step up or they need to go. And... A lot of people will probably say, when I mention the names, they'll probably think I'm wrong. And that's okay. Everyone's entitled to opinions. But for me, some players need to step up. Now, if you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Hit the like button as well and check out Kitbag in the description to make sure you solidify your Christmas presents for your family as soon as possible. So shall we get into player number one who I think needs to step up? That is Caden Jackson, Corey Blackett-Taylor. Number two, they can fit into the same category. Caden Jackson started the season in astonishing form. Brilliant, amazing. Now, I don't know what's happened, but all of a sudden, it's as if he can't play football. Now, I do personally think it coincides with Warren trying to play him through the middle on occasion. Obviously, we saw that versus Swansea City. We saw it at the weekend, uh, towards the back end of the second half. And he's just ineffective in that position. And then you've got Corey Blackett-Taylor. A player who is our first fee-paid sign-in since Kamil Yuzviak. And he's had about the same impact as Kamil Yuzviak. None. He's been very, very poor for a vast majority of the time he's been on the pitch. Does he deserve more time on the pitch? Probably not. But the problem is, when he does play well, he's then moved about too much. He doesn't get given the full opportunity. And in my opinion, he doesn't take the opportunities either. And that's two wide players, in my opinion, who could probably be starters in this division if they turned up. But they don't seem to turn up often. And the big question for me is, what can Derby County do? What can Paul Warren do? What can the fans do to help these players turn up? I think there's got to be a question asked of the recent form of Kenzo. Do I think Kenzo has performed badly this season? No. But I think in recent weeks, we have been found out as to how we play. And ultimately, Kenzo is the one that suffered. I do think he suffered a bit of fatigue a few weeks ago. And obviously he's missed a few games since then. Not necessarily been a starter. Which is probably the right call from Paul Warren. But we need to see him hit form again. And I think that all coincides. With whatever formation we play. In a back three. And a midfield three. If he's not the highest forward. I think he shouldn't be in the team. I'm not saying he should play as a number ten. I just think he should be our furthest forward midfielder. I think he's a number eight. I think that he's just missing a bit of confidence. And that's probably come from being overplayed early doors in the season. And we knew it was going to happen because we don't have anybody to replace him. We don't have another creative midfielder. I spoke about it throughout the summer. Derby County haven't had proper creation in midfield since Ravel Morrison. Since Mason Mount, Harry Wilson. And this is our biggest problem. It's alright having workhorses, having engines, tacklers. Who are you going to give the ball to? Because Ibu Adams isn't a playmaker. And to be completely honest, there's a fourth player on this list. Tom Barkazen. Now understandable, he's not had as much football this season. Whether it's injury or whatnot that's kept him out couldn't particularly tell you off the top of my head but towards the back end of last season his form dipped 
at the start of this season, he's not been very good. It was around this time last year where he hit an absolutely brilliant run to what, uh, up until towards, like, I think it was the end of January or end of February, where it was unbelievable. And we need him to do that again. To help us get out of this relegation battle that we're falling into. And that, for me, is five players who can do better, who can do more. Caden Jackson, Corey Blackett-Taylor, Tom Barkazen, and Kenzo Heldmine. That's four. I lied. There is a fifth player. Who is it going to be? Ibu Adams. Ibu Adams works really hard. And a lot of you are probably going to be down in the comments right now. Oh my God, he's been our best player. Ultimately, off the ball, incredible. But I think if you look back at some of the goals we've conceded, he's had an issue in build-up sometimes. Now, I'm not going to say that Ibu has been bad this season. Do not like take me out of context. I think he's having a brilliant season. I just think tactically, I think he needs a technical midfielder next to him. And we brought in Ben Osborne to do that job yesterday. I think Ben Osborne did really, really well. But he can't seem to play two games in a week. And which is even more infuriating is that uh, we've got six games in the next 28 days or whatever it is. So it's, it's hard because Kenzo isn't really a Ben Osborne and needs to be higher. Tomo isn't necessarily the one you want picking up the ball. I'm not saying he's not good enough to do it. In my opinion, he is. I think Kenzo is as well. It's just about tactical, tactical know-how and knowing where you want your best players. And I know some people are going to go off on one, that the fact I've put Ibu Adams in this list, but there's some players, in my opinion, that can do more than they're doing. I do think he's one of them. I love him on a defensive standpoint, on an attacking standpoint. I don't ever really want him to have the ball because he worries me. We give away a lot of possession from his passes and things like that. And I do think over the last... I don't even want to say the last few games because ultimately he's made those errors across the course of the last few games. But he has shown that he can be uh, football intelligent of a sense of knowing he can't make passes and he goes off to cash in or goes off to Osborne or Kenzo or Tomo or one of the wide players. The problem is when he's swinging these crossfield balls and they just don't necessarily hit the mark the way they should do. And that is a big problem, in my opinion, for Derby County across the course of this season. We've got players trying to do things that they shouldn't be doing. Just play simple football. Like, get the ball in the box. Get it in the danger areas. And you'll score goals. You'll cause problems. That's what you've got to do. You've got to get it in the opposition half. Get it in the opposition box. Put shots on target. You will eventually score goals. But the problem for Derby County is they do not score goals. The players I've mentioned must take a little bit of the blame. I know some people will probably say Zeta Strom should be doing better over the course of recent weeks, but ultimately I think he's been very unlucky with a couple of the goals. Probably should have done better for the Swansea ones and that's okay. But we've got a lot to do, a long way to go. Now, if you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow for the Derby County versus Leeds United preview. So make sure you've got that notification bell on and I'll catch you in the next one.